Have you ever wondered what is actually going on inside of your brain when you close your eyes and meditate? Imagine being able to look inside and actually see your brain waves change over the course of a meditation session. In this video, I'll share with you my simple preferred entry level meditation brain mapping strategy. I'll show you how to get set up, what to expect, my preferred meditation practices to use with this technology, what the graphs actually mean, and the most common mistakes I see when people try to use this technology. And for those of you who are new here, I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, and here on Tech for Psych, I've tried dozens of brain devices over the past 10 years to figure out the best strategies for you to supercharge your brain through the latest neurotechnology and ancient wisdom. If you've ever looked at the brainwave tracking space right now, you've likely noticed that it is a mess of different devices that make a lot of claims about their capabilities, but don't seem to back it up with science. I find that it tends to just overwhelm people, which is a shame because people are really interested in neuroscience and want to do things like track their meditation sessions. The whole thing just needs to be simplified, which is why I'm making this video with the Muse headband. What I really like about the Muse headband compared to a lot of competitors is that they are affordable, but they also have third-party research that validates their EEG brainwave data accuracy. There are two different kinds. There's the solid form factor Muse 2 that works just fine with this brainwave tracking software that I'll talk about in this video. And the more advanced Muse S, which is a soft band that you can even wear while laying down and sleeping. The Muse S is more expensive than the Muse 2, but I would say it's quite a bit more comfortable and it definitely can be worth it if you prefer to lay down while you meditate or if you want to track your sleep or if you have sleep issues, you can use their digital sleeping pill program to try to help. Both of these wearables connect to your devices through Bluetooth at levels that are safe as far as EMF is concerned. Now the regular Muse app has a one year subscription included in the price and has all kinds of neurofeedback meditation experiences on it, but they don't allow you to take a look at the raw EEG brainwaves. But there is a third party app that allows you to get the data and graph out your self-guided meditation sessions so that you can track and enhance your solo practice and meditate like the pros while not breaking the bank. To get the Mind Monitor app, just go to the App Store and pay the $15 one-time fee. Just as a disclaimer, I do have affiliate links with Muse, but I don't get any kickback from Mind Monitor, so I'm simply recommending this additional app for those enthusiasts out there that want to track their meditation sessions. I get asked about this all the time, and I just wanted to make sure that people are aware of this resource. If you're like most people and want to graph out your meditations using the online graphing tool from Mind Monitor, you'll want to create a free Dropbox account and link it to the app so that it can automatically upload your recorded session CSV files to the cloud, and then you can download them to your computer and then drop them into the online graphing tool. First of all, head to the App Store and download the Mind Monitor app. Once you've downloaded the app, pull it up and you should get this screen. Make sure to hold the Muse power button for two seconds and then let go so that the light is flashing in Bluetooth pair mode. At this point, the app might pair to your device quickly if you've paired with it before, but if it doesn't pair right away, go over to the Bluetooth list to select it from available devices. If it doesn't connect, try to toggle on and off the Bluetooth switch. Have the Mind Monitor app pulled up before going back to Bluetooth and the device should show up on the list. Once you are paired, it's time to put on the headband. I like to wet the sensors with the wet paper towel and also wet my forehead and the areas behind my ears. This makes it easier to get a good signal from your brain and will result in better data. Once you have the headband on, take a look at the horseshoe on the app and see the different colors representing the electrodes get filled in. This signifies that it has a good connection. The horseshoe should then disappear from the screen at that point and will reappear with the color missing if one of the electrodes is not getting a good signal. If you're using a Muse 2, you might want to use a bungee to tighten the band around your head if you're not getting a good EEG signal. The bungee cords are readily available on Amazon. At this point, I'll set my tablet down. I like using these little stands that you can get off Amazon as well for $10 each. I'll sit down on the meditation mat. There's several different displays that you can toggle through that are fun to look at to include the accelerometer data, a heat map, and individual frequency displays. It definitely helps to have your experiment or meditation type figured out before you get to this stage. I prefer to do either open monitoring or a meditation object focus meditation. You can use mantras, but they need to be silent and internal because any vocalization will disrupt the EEG signal 
through jaw and facial muscle contractions. And when you're ready, hit the record button on Mind Monitor and then go into the meditation. I like to use a watch timer that vibrates at 10 minutes to make sure that I have gone long enough without opening my eyes to check recording times and potentially mess up the recording by opening my eyes and disrupting the signal. Head to your Dropbox account, download the CSV file, and then load it into the Mind Monitor website. It should then graph out your meditation session. You can do absolute or relative values to help compare the brain waves. You can also see front to back balances as well as left to right balances as well. Reading these graphs is definitely tricky and there's a lot of debate in the neuroscience field about what these frequency ratios actually mean. We see here alpha, beta, gamma, theta, and delta waves. Typically the slower waves like delta and theta are more prominent in sleep and drowsy states, while faster brain waves like beta are more prominent when the brain is wakeful, paying attention, and problem solving. Alpha tends to be the recognized meditation frequency that tends to increase during meditation. I do have another video that describes these states in depth, and I'll link that below. For me, I like to see how alpha goes up during an open monitoring mindfulness practice, and I also like to track beta and gamma waves that increase over the course of energetic focus meditations that I do in the form of Kriya Yoga. Some of the most common mistakes I see people make when using this technology is number one, moving around too much or tightening the face or jaw during meditation sessions. The muscle contractions can actually increase the delta frequency bandwidth and disrupt your graphs with data that's not actually coming from your brain. Number two, make sure to go the full 10 minutes or the Mind Monitor program will not be able to graph the averages. Number three, make sure to be consistent with either eyes open or eyes closed during the recording because there is an effect called alpha blocking that happens when your eyes are open that will significantly impact the graph. If you wanna see alpha blocking just as an experiment, do half the session with your eyes open and half the session with your eyes closed and see how the alpha frequency band changes significantly with eyes open versus eyes closed. Number four, using transdermal electrical stimulation devices like the Pulsetto will definitely disrupt the EEG signals, partially due to Bluetooth interference, but definitely from the electrical discharge that happens on your skin. I found that PEMF devices like NeoRhythm and Shift have less of a direct effect on the readings and tend to be more interesting just because I know that there's not as much contamination in the signal as with the transdermal devices. If you wanna get this set up and start tracking your meditation sessions, as of now, it will cost you $340 for the Muse S and $213 for the Muse 2. That is different than the advertised price on their website because you can use my special link below and get a discount. This is in contrast to some of the more advanced brain mapping systems like OpenBCI, which costs over $2,300. There is a 30 day return policy, so you can try them out and return them if it's not working out for you. And then the Mind Monitor app is $15 right now. There's also new companies popping up right now like RentMD that offers a rental program for these devices. You can rent the Muse S for $45 a month and the Muse 2 for $30 a month if you just wanna rent them and try them out and see if they work for you. Also, I should mention that you can have your brain mapped by professional if you decide to do clinical neural feedback remotely with MindLeft, which also also uses the Muse headband, they put an additional electrode that plugs into the micro USB port and you move it around your scalp and get different EEG readings for a clinical assessment. This is the same system that was recently featured in the Netflix special quarterback where Kirk Cousins of the Minnesota Vikings was using it for sports focused brain training. There is a MindLift code below if you're interested. I also made a guide talking further about how to read these graphs and different meditation practices that I use. That link is in the description of this video as well. And I also have a video that I put out last week about how EEG actually works in these wearables and you can click that here. I do plan on having a more advanced video on how you can export this CSV data to 2D and 3D brain mapping program that I'm working on right now. So be sure to subscribe and watch out for that video coming soon.